Hello, class 4-3. Mr. Waterman here with today's morning lesson. Today is Thursday, December 3rd, 2020. I hope everyone is doing safe and well. As I talked about yesterday, the other book that I was using to read the fables to you for the morning lessons is now finished. But I also found another book, uh, a fable, in my classroom. This is only one story. And the title of this fable is, It's Mine. And this is a fable by Leo Lioni. Now, what I would like my students to do this morning, language arts students, after you finish listening to me read the fable, I'm going to ask all of you to answer a question. And you can type your answer directly into the comments form that I always put up uh, beside the video. For the fables that I'm reading. It is important that all of you in my language arts class answer this question. I will be using this question as a type of quiz to give you points. Since we have not been in school uh, for many weeks now, sort of off and on, I would like to use this opportunity to see how well many of you, all of you, are understanding these fables. Now, some of you have been very good about writing a comment each and every day, and I do appreciate that. But I do need to hear from everyone, because this is a longer fable, this is going to be a longer video. So I want all 20 of you in my language arts class to type something in and answer the question, please, okay? All right. As always, please feel free to read along, sit back and listen very carefully, and I hope you enjoy today's fable. Just by looking at the cover of the book, you can probably guess what this fable might be about. It's mine. Again. In the middle of Rainbow Pond, there was a small island. Smooth pebbles lined its beaches, and it was covered with ferns and leafy weeds. There you go, there's the island. There's some more of the island here. And there's a frog. On the island, lived three quarrelsome frogs named Milton, Rupert, and Lydia. They quarreled and quibbled from dawn to dusk. They liked to argue with each other, fight. There we go. Stay out of the pond! yelled Milton. The water is mine. Oh, goodness. Get off the island, shouted Rupert. The earth is mine. So they're fighting over water and they're fighting over the earth. My goodness. The air is mine, screamed Lydia as she leaped to catch a butterfly. And so it went. There's Lydia leaping to catch the butterfly. Here they are again. Let's see what happens. One day, a large toad appeared before them. I live on the other side of the island, he said. But I can hear you shouting, It's mine! It's mine! It's mine! All day long. There is no peace. Because of your endless bickering, 
You can't go on like this. With that, the toad slowly turned around and hopped away through the weeds. It's a scary toad. Uh-oh. Let's see if the frogs learn their lesson. No sooner had he left than Milton ran off with a large worm. The others hopped after him. Worms are for everybody, they cried. But Milton croaked defiantly. Not this one, it's mine. Suddenly, the sky darkened and a rumble of distant thunder circled the island. Rain filled the air and the water turned to mud. The island grew smaller and smaller as it was swallowed up by the rising flood. The frogs were scared. Ooh, looks like a terrible storm, doesn't it? Desperately, they clung to the few slippery stones that still rose above the wild, dark water. But soon, these two began to disappear. Uh-oh. Frog's in trouble. There was only one rock left, and there the frogs huddled, trembling from cold and fright. But they felt better now that they were together, sharing the same fears and hopes. Little by little, the flood subsided. The rain fell gently and then stopped altogether. Oh, look at who they are on top of. My goodness. But look, the large rock that had saved them was no rock at all. You saved us, shouted the frogs when they recognized the toad. Wow. The next morning, the water had cleared. Sun rays chased silver minnows on the sandy bottom of the pond. Joyfully, the frogs jumped in, and side by side, they swam all around the island. Now look at how happy they look. Oh, that's wonderful. Together, they leapt. Or they leaped after the swarms of butterflies that filled the air. And later, when they rested in the weeds, they felt happy in a way they had never been before. Isn't it peaceful, said Milton, and isn't it beautiful, said Rupert, and do you know what else, said Lydia. No, what, the others asked. It's ours, she said. The End 
What a beautiful, beautiful fable. Now, the question that I want all of you to answer, especially if you're in my language arts class, Here's my title. It's mine. And the question I want you to answer is, what lesson did the large toad Teach Milton, Rupert, and Lydia. What lesson did the large toad teach Milton, Rupert, and Lydia? I want you to answer this question in two to three sentences. Now, you can type your answers directly into the comment form that is attached next to the video. Or if you want to write it on a piece of notebook paper like this, you can do that, but you must take a photo and send it to me. You can email it to Mr. Waterman. That will probably be easier for you to type it directly into the contact form, like many of you have done, okay? If you need help typing your answer, please ask mom or dad or one of your brothers or sisters, okay? Now, that's all for today, remember, Please answer. This is very, very important. Please answer this question. My language arts class, kids. Okay? Take care. Stay safe. Be well. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Take care. Have a great day studying. And bye-bye for now.